Hi, Kiki. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. It's so Thank good you to be for here. coming. It's, it's a pleasure. So let's start, start to talk about you. So for what I, and, I have understood, you are from Ecuador, but you live in Germany. Am I right? That is correct, yes. So how did you end up in Germany from Ecuador? Uh, that is uh, the story of my life. I uh, was born and raised in Ecuador, but I went to the German uh, school, uh, private school there. And so I learned German from early on when I was a kid and I got my high school degree, the German high school degree, as well as the Ecuadorian one. So I was able to uh, come and study university here in Germany. And uh, that's why I, I moved here. I moved to the south of Germany and I studied uh, musicology at Heidelberg University. And um, yeah, and then I kind of stayed. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know that in Ecuador there is this opportunity to study in, the, in, in a German language school, let's say. Uh, so it's really yeah. interesting. It is. Uh, there are international schools everywhere. Like there was the German school I went to. There was also a British school. There were, I think, two French ones. Um, these were, of course, uh, private schools. So we have a we have a public school system, but it's not, uh, or it wasn't back then, uh, very good. And uh, I, yeah, I had the privilege that uh, my parents. My parents paid for <laughs> for all of my my education and um, me and my brothers, and uh, there were there are German schools all over the the world actually. So it was funny because there were three, I think there are three in Ecuador. There are a few in Colombia, in Argentina, uh, all over Latin America, and so there was this kind of like the Olympics of the German schools in Latin America, and um, they would. My brother was a was um uh was good at sports and so he would he would travel <laughs> going to those <laughs> kinds of um of uh, events yeah okay that's nice how many languages do you speak as i like to say five but that's <laughs> i wish <laughs> it was always my dream to learn at least like five languages i speak uh, Spanish is my native language. I speak English and German um, all the time very well. I'm very confident in those. Um, that's why Bleeding Metal is also in English. Um, and I have basic knowledge of Finnish and Swedish. I cannot really carry a conversation, but I understand a lot. Okay. Oh, and I had some French in high school and also a little bit of Latin in university. But those are like things yeah. i can recognize <laughs> not, i not personally more. speak three languages and uh, all three in a bad way but uh, i have my <laughs> strong accent as you can hear so yeah i speak english but there is this accent that uh, i i'm just trying to embrace uh, uh, with also this it is language. lovely and uh, right because you're from italy right yeah and of course, I speak Italian, but I have the mm -hmm. um, the accent from the dialect from my own town, so that's a strong one. <laughs> and then I speak Finnish with an accent <laughs> that people don't get to where I'm from, so they are always, <laughs> are you from Confused. Estonia? Uh, I No, and also I don't think <laughs> I sound like an Estonian speaking Finnish, but maybe yeah. because uh, it's not common to see Italians in particular where I live so right but right that's that, that's the story that's the story. <laughs> let's mm -hmm. talk about the yeah. uh, bleeding metal uh, podcast uh, so tell, yes. tell us more about this podcast uh, when did you start because you and Pia start at some point and why did you yes. decide the uh, to start this podcast and giving that name also. Well, Pia and I met back in 2011. We were both uh, doing internships at Rock Hard magazine here in Germany. And 
uh, we just got along really well and wanted to keep in touch and keep working together. We started working uh, with other people from around that uh, that scene that we met at the time on other online magazines, online metal magazines, but nothing like really, nothing was really like, I don't know, for me at least, nothing was really fulfilling. And she and I um, had this wish to make the women in metal more visible and and to show the world that um, it's not it's nothing new that women women are making metal music or heavy music and so we started in 2013 our online magazine back then it was called metal and high heels because you know high heels are associated with femininity and um, a little bit of empowerment I think too and so we had. We had our online magazine and we wanted to combine everything. We wanted our audience to be also female metal metal heads, metal fans. Um, that didn't work out that well. <laughs> but that's why we included topics like fashion and lifestyle in our magazine as well. We didn't only have album reviews and, and live reports. We did have those as well. But... Not only those, uh, we enjoyed talking about um, ma doing metal um, makeup tutorials and all that kind of kind of stuff. That was a lot of fun. But we also went to to where the women in the scene were on the stage as well. So we launched the magazine in, as I said, in 2013 at Metal Female Voices Fest, which used to be a festival in Belgium with full of female fronted metal bands. And um, that's not a genre, by the way. <laughs> that was one of my of my columns. I think the female fronted term was something for the community to band together, supporting women in metal. And it it was never made to, to define a genre or a style of music that was, I don't think that was never uh, the intention, but the audience at these kind of events was very, male and older than us so we yeah those were the people um well supporting the the female singers and also those were the people who then read our our magazine and and watched our interviews we had we did a lot of uh interviews for youtube back then um i can send you the link to our channel and um and those were really, really interesting because we also wanted to ask about um, a, to to put in a little bit of a of a feminist twist and ask the the women if they had if they had experienced discrimination in the metal scene. And we heard the the typical stories of um, yeah, we're loading into the venue and somebody asks me, "Are you the girlfriend of the guitarist?" And it's like, "No, I'm I'm in the band." and uh, those kinds of things. And the sad thing is that 10 years later, we keep hearing those stories and it has gotten less and less, but sometimes we have interviews or we talk to, to younger generations of women in metal and sometimes that still happens. So I think as a metal community, we still have a, a, a long way to go, but that was always our purpose to to give the world a little bit more of a of a feminine perspective on heavy music, and so we started the magazine uh, then. And at some point, we realized Pia and I both listened to a lot of podcasts, and that was the podcast boom around 2017 when we also started making ours. And it was part of the magazine. And then during the pandemic, uh, a little bit after. In 2021, we decided to rebrand it and to close the magazine and the writing because that was also, um, we were in the same position as you, right? We're doing this for the love of the music and because these talks and these conversations with with artists and with uh, women in metal behind the scenes and everything bring us so much personally as well, but we never could monetize it. We never, we've never gotten paid a cent for our work, which is at the end of the day, hard work. <laughs> We've had long nights, a lot of preparation for the interviews, a lot of preparation after the interviews for the podcast as well. And, and back then we were paying for the hosting of the website. So we were investing a lot of time in writing all of these articles and we really 
didn't see anything in return. And so we decided to shut down the website and just keep it, keep it going because we loved it, but keep it going in the audio format only. And that's what we've been doing now. That's when we decided to, to call it um, a different name and bleeding metal was something that maybe people don't associate with it right away, but <laughs> it was a bit of a, of, um, of an inside joke of, you know, um, women have periods and so <laughs> and there sense. is iron in in all our bloods uh, as humans so um bleeding metal is not only <laughs> is a bit of a figurative because of course we we have the metal music in our veins ourselves but um yeah it's that kind of inside joke <laughs> yeah 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 it's true that uh, when you do for the love of music to just to support bands and people that are in the scene, we don't get anything from that. It's just uh, for the love, the passion, the passion that we have, and I think that not everybody mm -hmm. knows that this it is. It is like this for uh, for uh, I think the ma majority of website Content magazine creators. and and so on. Also, yeah, you you know, uh, I have been doing interview for ten years now. Uh, mm -hmm. I still uh, collaborate with two websites. One is mm -hmm. Femme Metal website, so women in the metal world, <laughs> and yeah. uh, the other one is the offering website. Uh, but uh, for example, I yeah, I like to meet the band and do the interview, but but normally. Uh, after or before the gig you have like 15 minutes time to do everything and that's it and you you are stay you you stay in this uh, zone of talking about for example the new album and so on but you don't you don't get to chat about other things that could be more interesting sometimes uh, or well right everything is inter interesting but something else uh, sometimes you would like to have more time so that's why I decide to put this metal pizza. So everybody is at home. It's uh, you know comfy, but it Relaxed. was uh, yeah. it was something new that uh, uh, you know uh, when I contact managers, they ask for numbers, and like I'm like, mm. what what are we talking about? Uh, well, okay, I can give you the numbers. They are low, of course. It's something fresh, new, and yeah. uh, I'm not like receiving nothing from this. So yeah, I can give you the number. But it was so weird uh, that uh, I I don't know your opinion about the band uh, or manager because I don't know how much the band know knows about what the manager answered to to the yeah. To the to the media, what do you think about this? Uh, you know that they ask for number on social media, and they decide if the number are low to don't do it. What's your point of view? Yeah, I think it's really. I'm. I think I'm on the same same boat as you. It it rubs me the wrong way. It's. Um, uh, yeah, I don't like it either, <laughs> but I think. To some degree, it's their job because the their job is to give the the to promote the band as best as they can to give them as much of a of a platform as they can and as many listeners or viewers as possible, and so they will give priority to big media and then bigger content creators. And I do think that especially uh, since the pandemic, the YouTube and Twitch space. Um, blew out so much um even i think surpassed uh, podcasts as well at least music industry related ones and i do think that there is a lot of people that are actually making money of this uh, because they have reached these they have gone viral or however and they have reached these massive numbers and and that's great. I personally ha also have something against uh, the word reactor, as if it were a, a job title or a profession. I react to music on the internet. I'm a reactor. But it's the same thing I had in the beginning with influencer. You know, content creator is a little 
uh, I don't know, I like it a little better, but still. Um, I see myself personally as a journalist. I do I do a lot of research <laughs> for for uh, the interviews or the or the things that that we talk about because yeah that is that is something else that you mentioned and that we um, that was very important to us as well to talk to the musicians about something more about something for us also more important and more relevant which is that why when we rebranded and relaunched the podcast as Bleeding Metal, we didn't want to do promo work anymore. We did not want to just take the bands that were offered to us because there's this album that's going to come out. So please interview them. And it's like, what else do they have to tell though? Can they talk to us about feminism, about mental health, about human rights? Can we talk politics? Can we get philosophical with them? Can we talk about them as humans? Or can we talk to them as humans and connect on this on this deeper level so that they will tell us and our listeners things that will make us grow as people as well? And the cool thing is that even when we were not doing that yet, we always had the, these questions. As I was saying in the beginning, we were asking about feminism a little bit. We were asking about the industry. We were asking about... Uh, the royalties from streaming platforms, we were asking about the copyright laws and all of these different things. And in the end, it was the most rewarding thing to have the artists tell us, this was really a great interview. No one has ever asked me these things. Because at the end of the day, they're doing press work for days on end. They have interview after interview after interview and i just didn't see the need for the 70th interview where the with the same exact questions of what inspired you for the new album like what are you listening to right now that it's influencing the work on the new songs what does this lyric mean uh, who did you how did your new collaboration start and it's like they're tired of that. Like, give them something refreshing. Ask them something with a little more substance behind it. And so, um, yeah, the, the the highlight of our work has been that that we are able to to connect as humans, and and that they, the artists, are actually grateful for for questions they haven't thought about, they haven't heard before. Yeah, but that's uh, that's that's true. Um... Because they have all the time the same question uh, over and over and over and over. Yeah. And uh, when I do for the website, I know that I have to stay in a, a certain zone. Mm -hmm. But then when I'm here with Metal Pizza, I know that I can I can talk about everything, ev everything that comes yeah. to my mind. And I like to go with improvisation. Yes, I know that I have a few topics that I want to ask but then I want to hear uh, what people say and uh, work on uh, that topic going to you know it's it's more interesting it's more uh, stimuli stimulating uh, uh, mm -hmm. for me and also for the other person I think so that's, yeah that's yeah and, important. and that is also a challenge too because um or rather a challenge well two things two challenges one is the time limitation. When people offer you, when the when the promotion agencies, the PR agencies offer you an interview, and it's like you have ten minutes on a, on a, on the phone, and that that doesn't help me at all. Ten to twenty minutes that doesn't help me at all. So um, we are a podcast. Also, we have all the time in the world. Um, that's what we offer to the PR agencies. We need at least thirty minutes. Forty five is okay. An hour, perfect. If they don't have a limit, even better. But of course, everybody has lives and everybody has other things to do. So we try to be as brief as possible. Um, but on the other side, it's also the different topics that people are willing to talk about. Like recently, or one of the main topics that we started talking about was mental health. We started the podcast with an episode on mental health in 2017, and it's been uh, a recurring, a recurring topic. It was also a big part of the interviews that I had at Tuska in Helsinki yeah. uh, last year, because um, that was also something in, uh, an incredible experience. I was um, able to organize and host the Tuska Forum by Bleeding Metal, and we had some amazing interviews. And to be able to 
to talk about very deeply personal things with Samuel Bana, with Marco Hietala, and these people that, that, that I that all of us admire so much and to be able to get them to tell their story, their story a little better and, and talk about their lives and, and yes, what inspired certain songs and such, but actually what kinds of emotional experiences brought those up. That was very, very rewarding. And, and this, um, I will never forget the look that Marco Hietola gave me after the interview. And, and when he said, thank you for, for it, I was like, it was just so, so moving. Um, but uh, but the time constraint sometimes doesn't allow for those deeper connections. And that was something um, that we experienced right there, too. Uh, we were able to talk to Alisa white Gloss from Arch Enemy, but she only had 15 minutes. And it was this, OK, come in, uh, get mic'd up and, and let's go. And also, um, she didn't really know. I think I talked about this on the episode, um, on the podcast episode with that interview. She didn't really know what she was getting into. And so I had to tell her, this is for this, this is for the podcast, it's going to be live audience, um, but also recorded. And uh, we're going to talk about your activism. And, uh, and then she like relaxed and was able to talk and we and we, we were able to have like a very, very nice conversation. But then she had to run to run out. And so I was really extremely grateful that she even took the time because she had to go and warm up and get ready for her show. But at the same time, those 10 minutes, it was so difficult to get as much, as many questions as possible and, and to try to get her to tell the story of her activism uh, and how she sees herself as an activist first and an artist second um, to, to help her tell that story in such a short amount of time. So, yeah, I, I totally get you. It's, it's difficult to get all that balance and, and I do appreciate much more to... To just have the freedom of, of of chatting in a relaxed, safe space, and and sometimes we all go on tangents and start talking about other things that are not that related. But then, um, yeah, that's that's how conversations work in real yeah. life, right? And it's 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 better because you know if just the normal question that you stay just on the on the music side, it's just uh, like two robots talking. <laughs> pretty much but then when yeah, you get exactly. uh, somewhere else it's uh, you know you get to to know the person and then it's beautiful you know sometimes for those short interviews you know okay you try to do everything fast because they say mm -hmm. that it's a maximum of 15 minutes but then the band still wants to chat with you so you stay there and you chat and it's 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 nice that they want to know more and uh, the next time that you are going to meet they come oh a long time they are like yeah we saw five years ago and you remember of me that's that's something uh something nice that but uh, yes, it's not always lovely. possible to uh, make the impression you know because if it's mm -hmm. 10 minutes then it depends how how the person uh, open open uh, his heart, her heart, uh, they, yeah. <laughs> as, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as as you want to say. Uh, so it's uh, it's 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 not uh, not that easy. But uh, I like to meet people, and uh, when it comes to artists, I I feel that I I still I'm a bit anxious before the interview, uh, mm -hmm. but then it gets away and i think that uh, being yourself doing uh, doing what you do is the best thing so overthinking is not something that should happen but True. i'm a, i'm a big overthinker so oh me too <laughs> oh, high five <laughs> yeah. yeah so trying to work because uh, you know um Coming from Italy, mental health, for example, is something that uh, it's not talked about. It's like kind of taboo. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So if you if you go to a therapist, uh, people look at you like if you if you are crazy or something like this. Nowadays, uh, still. I yeah, I think so. I think that there are still wow. many people uh, judging. Um, mm. I personally, I I never went. Uh, well, actually, now that I, where I'm working, we go one time per month, month to a therapist to, with the group. Uh, oh, wow. I'm a physiotherapist and we go 
all the physiotherapists. So we talk about how it's going on and we just talk so openly. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's something beautiful that the, the the it's paid by the work and we we don't have problem at work. I think that also this is why, because uh, if there is any problem, we can talk there and we can work on yeah. that and feeling how the others are feeling. But uh, besides that, I have never been uh, to a therapy session. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, when I was studying physiotherapy and we had this uh, course of uh, uh, psychophysiotherapy. Oh, wow. Uh, uh -huh. It, it was a short one, but uh, it was more like uh, self-therapy, let's say. We went through okay. um, all those uh, those um, situations or thinking about ourselves. Um, and then I realized, uh, think about me, why I'm acting in a certain way. What's, what's about, uh, what kind of trauma certain situation provoked. In, in a kid for yeah. example and uh, then yeah. uh, then I start to work on me realizing mm -hmm. okay I have uh, some trauma from this and that so I I need mm -hmm. to accept it and uh, work it, it's it's not easy because you you don't want to accept that you have a issue but then you, you mm -hmm. have uh, and uh, I think that it's it's really interesting and everyone should work and if they cannot yeah. find themselves, they need to go to a therapist because you need to talk with someone to yes. to find what what is bringing you down sometimes. And yeah. it, and it's fine and it's it's good because uh, we are people. Yeah. We we need we need support, and we need to support yes. each other. That's that's something important. Yeah, and that thing is something that not everybody realizes humans were not made to survive alone and we were not made to we're not supposed to know everything and figure everything out by ourselves and on our own asking for help especially professional help when needed I think is very courageous and something that I encourage a lot something that has helped me immensely throughout the years and and mental health struggles is also some not something that can be healed it's something that will work on forever and I've been dealing, for example, with uh, depression and anxiety since I was a teenager, the early teenagers. And um, and it's just good to know that I have the tools to manage those things when they pop up um, and that I have the support, uh, um, yeah, accessible to me to to get through through those times. And also, it's really important to know that 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 we're not alone, that there's someone out there going through the same stuff so um yeah and that is something that i think is is been talked more in in the metal community especially um we're by far not the only ones who talk about this uh, maybe we were i would like to think that we were some of the first <laughs> but i'm i know that that bands and artists are talking about mental health uh, in other media as well and that is great yeah and but now, and that was the third um, struggle that I wanted to to comment on that I'm having currently is I, I've been getting a lot of um, requests from PR people to have artists on the podcast. They want to talk about mental health. And because it's kind of the more accessible part, I think, as well, of, of all the different topics that we cover right now. And it's like, well, yeah, but like we've We've had so many topics about mental, so many episodes about mental health. Like I need more. I need artists to tell me more, to tell me other sides of their of their personalities as well. I need you to tell me what are you doing right now to make the metal scene more diverse? What are you how are you supporting marginalized communities uh, feel more welcome in the metal community? How are you supporting women in metal directly? How are you um, positioning yourself uh, politically, giving giving really clear statements about how we should all respect each other and each other's freedoms and each other's rights and um, all of those kinds of things. I was listening to another women-led metal podcast just recently um, on Wednesdays We Were Black and they were saying that for 2024 they want bands to stand for something. Just something, anything. You can choose 
stand for whatever it is, but stand for something. Because just making music is not enough for me to like you anymore. <laughs> yeah. We need music with more substance. Music has always been revolutionary. Music has always moved people so much, inspired people, inspired revolutions, inspired, I don't know, social change. And also connected people made us identify with someone. And so, um, yeah, just music about our depression. <laughs> we can do better. <laughs> we can yeah. do uh, we can talk about topics that are a little more groundbreaking and, and, and can move the world a little a little more is my opinion. So yeah. I, I, I absolutely second what um, on Wednesdays we were black said like yeah stand for something make your music stand for something more and don't be afraid I think a lot of bands are afraid of being cancelled of losing fans if they say something um, controversial there are other bands that go the other extreme and go like okay I have to say something controversial so that people will pay attention to me and that I don't think that's good either but um But I do think that when bands say we stand with the LGBTQIA plus community and they lose some conservative fans because of that, I would say that's worth it because you're doing the right thing in the end. You're standing with, with people who need to be, who need the support, who need to feel more accepted. People who in some countries in this world are still persecuted, who's rights are still being cut off and um and that is the people who we want to who we need to stand by and so if you lose a few followers for doing that right thing i i would say it's worth it don't be afraid yeah. of doing that yeah. i think that uh you know th this world is crazy we live in a crazy world that's not a new a news but yeah. you know i think that uh, everybody should be able to speak their own true and their own idea but respecting the other people and yeah. uh, no no one should be really cancelled or attacked in a way I, I i don't know i think i have always been uh, like talking talking with also my friends in the past and we have different point of view and that was not like colliding in a, in a, either way but uh, we were talking and respecting each other's and being friends mm -hmm. because we are human. And sometimes, you know, I like also when people realize certain things with time and they, they change because we, we are we are able to change uh, when we get to know more something because we, yeah. we don't know any, everything. So we need time yeah. to, to understand uh, And sometimes there are things that we cannot understand, but we can support anyway. And uh, I, yeah, I just uh, or just accept. Yeah, and I just hope that people uh, will be kind with each other because kindness is the is the key to to make the world better. I think. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that touches my heart. Absolutely. Let's not cry yeah. now. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we we had now a bit of a more deep conversation and I would like to go on and on. <laughs> But um, <laughs> yeah. Let's get a bit uh, ahead to other other topics also. I have read that you are also a singer. Yes, I am. <laughs> do you have a band or uh, do you sing uh, other genres? So tell me more. I can tell you everything. It, also, thank you so much for asking me that question. <laughs> thank you so much for asking me all the questions. I'm usually the one asking the questions, so I was yeah. a bit a bit nervous today. Um, yeah, I've been singing since I can remember. Um, legend says that I could sing before I could speak. And my mom actually has sent me even uh, recordings from when I was little. Um, but when I was 15, I actually started uh, taking singing lessons. And when I was 16, I uh, founded my first band. And 
And that's funny because that was back in 2003, 2004. Um, I had just started to listen to heavier music through uh, alternative rock and then through new metal. So Linkin Park, Corn, Limp Bizkit were like my gateway drug into, into metal. And one day Evanescence was a thing. And, and back then in Ecuador, right? So Latin America is heavily uh, influenced by the US pop and pop culture. And so, yeah, bands that were big there made it big in Latin America too, but we seldom got to see them live because they don't tour as much over there. And yeah, and so I listened to Evanescence and that blew my mind. And I was like, oh my gosh, women can do this too? Which is why that's how we work. That is why representation is so important. And um, yeah, and so I my first band was kind of in the Evanescence genre. And and the guitarist of my first band actually gave me a Nightwish DVD and I fell in love and I was like, OK, I have to be able to sing like her and I have to be like Taria, of course. And that's what I want to do, the type of music that I wanted to do. And so I started taking classical singing lessons. And when I was in when I moved to Germany and was in university, I uh, went back to singing lessons and I started a new band. Um, and but after that one, I kind of uh, I think my ambitions were were a bit high. We were friends and made music and I was happy that we found people um, that wanted to make the same music that I that I wanted to. But they didn't want to go full on professional with it and what I wanted to kind of. Um, so uh, also because I moved, that was the end of Vampirica was the name of, of my band back then. And I moved uh, up here in um, to a little bit of further northern Germany. And um, uh, that's also why when I started my internship that I was telling you about where I met Pia, and since then, I couldn't really find musicians that that were just like that, that were ambition, um, ambition, um, no, passionate, ambitious, professional, um, as I was. And turns out, I just did <laughs> a few months ago. And so I just started a new band. We don't even have a name yet, but we have a first song, a first original song. And um, and we're super super excited and uh, so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna spam everyone as soon as we have some nice. some music I can't to show. Wait. I can't wait to have uh, some. If if you have the social media, send me then the the social media so I can start to follow and and see what. You yes, we'll do. do. Oh, I will absolutely. Um, yeah, and I was super lucky to find these talented professional musicians that also want to our our goal is just to play live as much as we can and so that's what we're what we're working towards and it was really cool to sit down with them get to know them and and feel that everything uh, fits that uh, our goals fit um, the the genre of music we want to make fits. Um, I drifted away from the symphonic metal a few years ago. I started listening to more modern metal and metalcore. And I also started, um, because of that, I also started to learn harsh vocals, which has been a huge challenge for me personally, because as my vocal coach recently put it, through the classical singing um, training, I was so conditioned to sing pretty and sing beautiful that daring to sing dirty and aggressive and ugly has been a very uh, difficult mind frame to switch from and it's something that i think my muscle memory st still struggles with and like i want to sing ugly and my body says no <laughs> that's not what we are here for <laughs> that's not what we know <laughs> Um, but I'm getting more and more confident with my with my harsh vocals and and it's so much fun. It's just it's just a lot of fun. I was just uh, talking about that yesterday, um, how difficult it can be also to allow ourselves to feel all these feelings. Uh, as we were just talking about, right? Uh, Italy yeah. is probably very similar to Ecuador, this very conservative uh, society. 
uh, with very definite gender roles. And so if it's in general not really cool to speak about our emotions, especially difficult emotions like sadness and anger, um, as a woman to express anger is even more of a no-no. Yeah. And so and so for women to be doing harsh vocals and to be expressing that anger and 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 letting it out in that way is is something of course very natural and very good but for me I think it was also something in my brain that I was that I that I need to start switching from and and allowing myself to to show that side kind of yeah yeah so you are going to do more uh, me metal core kind of uh music nowadays what what, what is uh, the the music that you are uh, with your band going for of course yeah it's, it's music kind of is, that, uh, that. You, you need to experiment so music should be not like uh, this you you need to be open and try everything and uh, i also like bands that do in an album they put a bit of everything why not music it's hard. yes So the artist yeah. is, is the one that has the the power to to do whatever 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 absolutely the art the art. yeah uh, yes absolutely and I love the types of of crossovers to to mix different styles of music and 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 different instruments is something that I that I have always loved that is what I loved about still do what I love about symphonic metal that it has all of this orchestration from classical music with the the heaviness and the harshness of metal and um so that is yeah that is something that I've always loved and that I look forward to experiment a little more so yeah if it's a little bit metalcore but with some of my opera singing and or the other way around I don't know <laughs> but it sounds good because we'll I think that uh, I have a uh, you know when it comes to metal how I got into metal pretty much mm -hmm. is similar to yours um because uh, I did when I was a kid I didn't know what what genre of music is I was listening to everything that was coming to the radio or on the music tv so I yeah. it, it was it sounds good for me so yeah and then realizing uh, now that the most of the song that I was enjoying are really depressing songs <laughs> really mm -hmm. sad <laughs> and uh, but they are beautiful they speak to my heart yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah um it was of course Linkin Park uh, and uh, P.O.D. Um, Evanescence uh, mm -hmm. and yeah then I went to I got a friend that uh, introduced me yeah of course I knew about Iron Maiden and so on but what it got me was a band like Sonata Artica Night with Children of Bodom so I can say that I'm a power symphonic metal uh, kid let's say, <laughs> let's mm -hmm. say like, mm -hmm. but now more the time go go on i like to listen to more different genres and uh yeah metalcore if it's if it's good yeah mm -hmm. because not sometimes it's about the band or it's about the album or it's about the song so it's not just a genre i i just like to to get to know also new band and there are so amazing so many amazing band in the underground scene that yeah. i'm i'm I think that I'm blessed to be able to see those bands uh, live and enjoy. Well, of course, living in Finland, you have so many bands. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I don't have the chance to go to see bigger bands that much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it bothers me a bit, but uh, maybe when I become rich uh, in another <laughs> <world>. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the underground scene and the uh, Every every year I get new bands that I start to follow and listen to their music. Well, they they are blind, like a blow minding. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, and uh, well, yeah. Finland also has a few great festivals that that have amazing lineups, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> talking about Tuska again, this this year's lineup is is incredible. I think is the best summer festival lineup this yeah. year. The only um, thing about Tuska is that it's so expensive. I was last year there for the first time. Oh, really? But uh, it was like a vacation somewhere in a South Europe, paying to go to see Tuska for three days. 
So yeah. it's something that this year I am not going to do. Also because last year I tried to to get the media pass for the mm -hmm. web signs and uh, I didn't get it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was a bit uh, I was a bit mad because of course <laughs> I'm, I'm the outsider because it was the first time that I applied. So right. Yeah, uh, the, the chances were lesser. Also, I don't stay in the in the Helsinki area, area and I don't go to concert there. So I'm no one. <laughs> I'm the no one there. So uh, I heard a certain thing that uh, it bothered me. Uh, so I was I, I I was a bit mad. I must say. Yeah. And I was like, uh, Tuska maybe is not going to be for me anymore i don't know it's every oh. year it, it's it's getting higher the price so <laughs> yeah because the festival is getting bigger true mm -hmm. yeah so i i yeah, don't know i think i don't know this year what festival i i want to try something else let's see let's see what i i still have to think <laughs> there are so many but there are s such good bands there at, at tusca that i'm a bit biting my hand <laughs> 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 yeah yeah there are there are that has happened to me too <laughs> that, that there are certain festivals that are a little more strict and and want the bigger numbers that we were talking about before and and it's just sometimes it's just it's just impossible um yeah I remember having an, an experience exactly like that with a, with a festival here in Germany that that was also and 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 I sent an angry email back <laughs> after that so it was yeah it was a few years ago though um but yes what going back to what we were saying about genres and and underground scenes I think also in combination to what we were saying before about female fronted and and how the genres are called the names of the of the labels that are we that we are putting on on different bands um I think it is only meant to be um a tool for communicating what we are doing as a band what we like as a fan what we have in common kind of or or maybe if you're recommending someone you're saying this is uh, this type of metal you might like it before you like this other type of metal that is similar but in the end you're totally right as humans we just connect with the emotion of the of the song with the rhythm with the instrumentation we we, we either like it or we don't like it that doesn't make it bad or, or or better it's just what we sometimes we connect with certain things sometimes we see ourselves reflected we can identify with with whatever they are singing about or or however it sounds uh, the heaviness the run is the aggression um and so I do think that 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 we should see it from that perspective, that labels or categories or genres are just meant to help us communicate and are not meant to be that that rigid. Um, so we shouldn't be like gatekeeping heavy metal because that is not metal because it has pop in it or that, has, that is not metal because it has rap in it. Um, everything is, uh, yeah, everything yeah. is... It, is 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 there for our enjoyment for for yeah. us to either say i like this or i don't like this you and know, sometimes it can also become branding i was talking to <clears throat> upcoming on the coming up on the bleeding metal uh, podcast <laughs> we had a, a really cool interview with blind channel and i asked them about this tag of violent pop do you still see yourselves as violent pop and they said it was just kind of a branding thing they wanted to to, to have something, a, a cool way to describe their music. And I think that's absolutely right. Um, we also have, um, there's a band here in Germany uh, called Horizons. Uh, they describe themselves as nerd metal. How does nerd metal sound? <laughs> to a certain degree, everything can be nerd metal, but you have to listen to them and understand. And their songs are about Dungeons and Dragons and <laughs> yeah. and type of things. So wasn't that uh, uh, Raps Rhapsody of Fire uh, are Hollywood score metal? Mm -hmm. Something like this. Uh, Rhapsody is from my hometown in Italy, so the, the, oh. that's the, that's the big thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember know. the name was a bit like Hollywood score or something like this. I, I can't now remember, but yeah, something like this. 
But yeah, yeah. it's uh, also it bothered me when there are those purist uh, people that see that the metal should be like this and this. Uh, so, for example, uh, Lost Society is a band mm -hmm. that, for in my opinion, they did every album that they have done is a really great album. Each of of the album and they are different and when uh, Law Society start to drift away from the trash metal people were mad and I was like not understanding because in my opinion they were still doing great music different but great music and they are great musicians yeah. so why to be that hard on an artist and start to calling name what what what's what's the problem of the people I don't I don't I don't get it yeah I think it's because we as humans in general don't really like change we like safety we like to to keep getting the same thing or we we have we like to trust that we will be getting this same thing from this specific band in this case forever because i had the same happen to me when linkin park changed styles i i don't think i ever called them sellouts but i i did stop listening to them because it was just so poppy it didn't speak to me anymore I did still go see them live. I was, I am so happy that I actually got to see uh, Linkin Park live with Chester once. Um, but, but I didn't listen to the last two or three albums that they made. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. And that's also kind of understandable, but, but we also have to know that artists are also allowed to evolve and to evolve their sound. And if they want to go in a different way, that is their right. <laughs> and if you don't want to listen to that just don't listen to that and if you need the same style that they were doing before you are absolutely going to find another band that is doing that true, true. so um yeah it's it's just uh a thing of, of of perspective and of looking for things elsewhere and and giving other bands a chance as well because that is also why uh, also going back to the the gatekeeping and everything like there was this rumor a few years ago in the in the well not rumor but it was there was this kind of controversy um in different metal media a few years ago saying that what's gonna happen when iron maiden and metallica retire and the metal scene doesn't have any headliners anymore it's gonna what are festivals going to do and i was like what trivium is doing great and and nowadays uh, there are even bigger arena arena yeah, arena selling uh, bands. There's Sleep Token. There is Electric Cowboy. There are so many bands that are making it really, really big. Oh. Spirit Box, and and they and they deserve those headlining spots. We have now uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Pikeway, Parkway Drive. We have Machine Lord Head has Lord. been there for for ages as well. There are just so many. Like, give them a chance. Stop listening to the same people for decades. Give them a chance. Open so your yeah, mind. it's funny because yeah, open your mind uh, and also diversify. Also, we need to see more people of color on on the stages, right? Uh, Fever yeah. Three is doing a great job on that. For example, Lorna Shore with Will Ramos. Uh, on vocals as well like we need we need all of that diversity we need to see also but more women and, and non-binary people on on the stages right so give all of these people a chance I'm sure they're gonna blow your mind and uh, before we change the topic uh, completely I want to recommend a band that has only two songs out and because we were talking about uh, genre labels they call themselves an art metalcore band and their name is Gore. Um, okay. the, they also have a female singer. And the two songs that they have out are bangers. I so always Gore, check them out. Yes, do that. Um, and if I understand correctly uh, from what I saw on Instagram, the singer is a woman in STEM. She works at NASA or something and has this hey. amazing metal band now too. It's like, wow, hell yeah. Nice. That's good to yes. know. Talking about yeah, so uh, also live give them a try. Like yeah, uh, people it's who it's important. Fans who only have one or two or two songs out, give them a, a chance to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um talking about live music, uh, um what was the first gig that you have ever seen? Which one was the, the one, the first one? 
It was a pop rock band from Argentina <laughs> called okay. Vilma Palma de Vampires back then when I was in Ecuador still, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Vilma you start Palma. always from somewhere. My first mm -hmm. was a Blink-182 and the opener was a Deftones in my hometown. And I had no what? idea about the Deftones. So I went for the Blink and uh, yeah, I was 14. <laughs> it was 2001. Or what? Wait, 2000. Wait, wait. If I was 14, let me think. I It was uh, September 2000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That is a dream. That is an incredible lineup to go see for your first concert. Amazing. Yeah, yeah that's true. It was, it was interesting and I enjoyed, but I didn't know nothing about metal. And I just went, was enjoying uh, the, the moment. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But let's take my jar of random topic and let's see what we mm -hmm. get here. Yeah, we haven't talked about pizza yet either. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how much we have to run. So school, um, oh. what kind of students you were? You were a, a good student or like me, not that good? <laughs> oh, I was... The for, for the first six years, because in Ecuador, school is divided into in two. The first six years is primary school, and the second six years is secondary school. And throughout the first six years, I was amazing. I was really good. I even got like into the top 12 uh, students of all our, our generation. We were like a hundred. So wow. So it was it was a big of uh, a big a big deal. And then, um, yeah, then I was a teenager and uh, and I didn't have the focus anymore, I guess. So I almost failed math when I was 14, I think. Um, and that scared my parents. <laughs> but but I was always very good at languages and music. And I remember when I was like in first or second grade. Uh, no, maybe it was sixth grade. So I was like 12 around that age and my music teacher wanted me to join the choir because I could sing and I was like no <laughs> I like to sing alone I don't like to sing in a group <laughs> so yeah back then <laughs> I was already yeah I had I had specific expectations <laughs> leader leader <laughs> yeah no that's super funny but talking about school uh later on I was a uh, I used to work as a vocal coach myself. I used to te okay. teach singing to others um, 10 years ago. I did that for like a year and a half. And that was really interesting too. And it was really, really fulfilling to to learn from my own students. Yeah. It was super cool too. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's something different. Uh, when you give advices, you correct uh, the, the way you, te you are teaching um, and then you see the results is uh, yes i think something beautiful yeah that was that was absolutely rewarding also to see the students yeah get over the their challenges and also enjoy it and have fun and and realize that they are progressing making progress and and enjoying that part but also as you were saying in giving that advice and in trying to observe how to help others become better i think i got better myself too yeah, yeah, that's true. You also in life you always uh, improve. You never stop learning. It's a mm -hmm. ongoing process. Process. So, yeah, it's uh, it's beautiful when you get ch chances chances to to improve uh, in a different way that you were used to, maybe. So yeah, yeah, and so that way everything is a school, right? We're learning everywhere. Life, the school of life. <laughs> yeah, I'm and learning now also... from you. <laughs> For example. Yes, that's what I was going to say. From conversations, we can learn so much from each other, from, from conversations. A very good friend of mine and I, uh, we talk uh, on the phone constantly. And and every time we're, we're like super corny because every time we're like, thank you for that. Like, I'm really learning from talking to you. I'm learning about myself. I'm learning about life. I'm learning about just just my, my own mental health as well. Sometimes it's it's just, I'm really grateful for, for those connections, for those friendships, and just for having these types of conversations with, with even people I just met at an event or something or at a concert. Um, I really like to, to get deep and, and 
that's that's my or, or that has been my priority in the past few days more philosophical conversation and less small talk oh, that's <laughs> yeah but let's yes. pick another another topic let's see what i'm going to ask you so i think that this this one feels like good <laughs> tattoo tattoos and piercing so i see you have a tattoo at least one i can mm -hmm. see so how many tattoos do you have i have eight okay at the moment yeah this was my second it's a it's a cat some people say yeah. it's a fox but it's a it's actually a cat okay so you are and... a cat lady I am a big cat I lady. See, uh, I have the, three the, cats. The, the, the images on the, on the back. Yeah. And also yeah, the, and the, the cats. The cat tree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I have a... two cats here at home. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a scratching scratching post and, and cat tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we have three cats at the moment. Um, last year, we had two. And one of them passed away last year. So... Um, the remaining cat was feeling lonely and we decided to adopt two, two kittens and they are chaotic. I can hear them on the other side of the door <laughs> playing they around. They have energy, yeah. but cats are like this. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, uh, eight tattoos at the moment. I'm working on, on designing an, uh, a new one uh, or my next one. And piercings, I have uh, two nose and a lip. That's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I started doing it really or really late in life because yeah also again the whole Ecuadorian upbringing my my parents were against that kind of thing yeah. but I can but I yeah. can see I can see because thinking about uh, you know Italy also uh, you know tattoos are still uh, something that for example if it, a doctor or someone uh, working in a bank uh, people are mm -hmm. is like you cannot uh, get that job because you have a tattoo and uh, in Finland uh, the first time that I went to the ba bank there was this lady uh, with uh, violet uh, hair, hair. Uh -huh. so I, I was like wow in Italy this could not be possible I was just <laughs> when I was working as an optician in Italy because I had a uh, so once I put some red uh, orange makeup uh, on my eyes mm -hmm. and uh, a client told me that um, this makeup is not uh, for work. Uh, this is like for theater or something like that. <laughs> I was and like, client <laughs> told you that? Wow. Yeah. Rude. And I was, since it was a client, I was like, also when I was optician, uh, I, there was uh, a lady, old lady that won she came for a check, a high mm -hmm. check, and uh, she didn't want me to because she want a man. To oh no! Ah. And then uh, a few times there were those uh, elderly coming, and um, where is the optician? It's me. Uh, I don't know if you if you can help me if you know what to do here. And then when I resolve uh, the the problem, they were like. Uh, Oh, yeah. And every time they want to work with me after that. But it was like mm -hmm. annoying. <laughs> of course. How infuriating. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But let's hope yeah. that never happens again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's hope. But let's talk about pizza. Do you like pizza? Of course. I love pizza. <laughs> What's your favorite pizza? I honestly don't know i like the one with arugula and parmesan and fresh tomatoes a lot mm -hmm. sometimes it comes with a little uh like serrano ham um on it uh, i really like that one um i have to admit i am a fan of pineapple on pizza <laughs> <laughs> not i don't know what your take on it is as an italian <laughs> well you know i don't like i don't think about pizza with pineapple, but everybody is free to put whatever they want on their pizza. It's it's not my problem until it's my my pizza is mine and I can put olives and whatever I mm -hmm. want, and everyone else can also put whatever they want. For me, it doesn't belong. But who yeah. I am to to decide what people should eat? <laughs> True. Wow, you're you're oof. You're very open minded about that. <laughs> I know about. I I haven't ever eaten it, but I know that in Sweden there is this pizza with banana and that with me that that's where i draw the line 
you know, I will try anything, not that. <laughs> in Finland, when I moved, uh, I was an au pair, and, uh, the, and the the family was, okay, let's do pizza. And then they were putting this uh, um, peach from the, from the can. Right, right. The, the peach. And for me, that was even weirder than everything else. It was like, what's going on? That's super yeah. sweet. Why do you want that on your pizza? And they put <laughs> uh, mice meat and the so on with this peach. So it was like, yeah. I don't know if it works. It's like weird, but it yeah. was their pizza, not mine. <laughs> so, all right, all whatever. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays there's also like dessert pizza with like chocolate and fruit and stuff like that. Um, Actually, you favorite, know, but... when I was a teenager, it came up the pizzeria start to do this dessert pizza that it was Nutella pizza. So it was mm. just the pizza baked and put on a Nutella and some yeah. uh, white cream. That's it. Yeah, it, it was smaller because you cannot eat a big pizza with Nutella yeah, to die. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it was it was it was nice nothing bad what I do know that uh that Finns put on their pizza is blue cheese and I'm all for it blue cheese on pizza is amazing um I, I don't yeah, like blue cheese it. but it's a thing also in Italy people are eating the gorgonzola pizza gorgonzola. And a lot of yeah, my yeah. guests were like Before gorgonzola cheeses. gorgonzola so I don't like it but uh, why not? Yeah. It works. Cheese works always well. Cheese is the best thing in the world. I've only been to Italy once so far, sadly. Uh, I went to Rome with my mom a few years ago and I had some four cheese pizza there. It was amazing. Like obviously yeah. the thinnest pizza in my life. But yeah, it's a great memory. I have to go back for sure at some point. Yeah, um, and also going back to the whole... festival or geeks uh, at the same yeah. time. That's, that's... Yeah, that would be great. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. But also, as I was saying, um, Latin America, very US, uh, USA influenced. So I, I, I don't mind a thicker crust pizza. That's also very, very enjoyable for me. You know, there is a time for everything. So true. if something is good, it's good. You don't, you yes. don't, I don't know. I'm not that I'm, I'm picky, but not too much. <laughs> and if something has melted cheese on it, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I just dropped my pen. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I got it. Because now it's time for the question. So mm -hmm. uh, the previous uh, guest uh, left you a question. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what do you think about the possibility of the environment could collapse that we run out of resources? Oh my gosh, that is deep. It's a deep. Um, we don't have much, much time, so yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's scary. I think it's something we should definitely put atten pay attention to. I think we should um, act politically and as consumers as well, because uh, I think our we have power not only by voting uh, in our democracies all over the world, but also with we live in capitalism. So um, our money has has power that way. The the companies that we support, whatever they make in big scale to the environment is something that we are doing, too, because we are supporting them to so yeah. that they keep doing that. So we have to be mindful of that. Um, yeah. I think I think we should all be be really 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 careful and pay attention because in in the end mother nature sustains us the planet sustains us there's no there's no humans without the planet without a planet to live on so we should actually take a little bit better care of it it might be too late but as long as we still it's alive we should be It's never too late if we start to if every, if everyone does something that's true. Yeah, we can still we can, can still can make change. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The power is in our hands at the end. Yes. But now oh, it's okay. time for uh, for you to to let uh, leave a question for the next guest. Yes. Um, I hope it's as good as as this one. But I would ask the next guest, how are you making the metal scene better? Nice. Better, safer. Um, nicer. <laughs> yeah, 
nice. This this one is a nice question. Thank you. But thank yeah, you. We are at the end of uh, this uh, episode, and thank you so much. It was super interesting. I will go on and on to to talk with you because uh, you are. Uh, I feel that we we are alike uh, on the mm -hmm. on the same on the same wave. We say that like wavelength. This. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> so I I would like to meet you live and have a chat for for real and uh, yeah. yeah and spend time to know you better because. I had I had the the time of my life now. <laughs> oh, me too. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, absolutely. Let's keep in touch and and meet up sometime if, yeah. if possible. That'd be great. Let's let's hope maybe when you come to Finland or if I come to Germany at some time, uh, yeah. it, it will be nice to organize something. Yeah. Yes. But uh, awesome. would you like to say something to people that are uh, watching or listening this episode of Metal Pizza? I would like to ask them the same question that I left for the next guest. Um, how are you making the metal scene better, more diverse, a safer space for marginalized identities? Um, how are we? I think the metal community has this, this fame of being very welcoming. And I think we can make that even better. We, we still have a little more, uh, a little, yeah. There's always space to be better at it, uh, to be nicer, to, to make it more sustainable, more diverse. And uh, yeah, maybe that's something that we can think about. And yes, thank you so much. Don't forget to follow us and such. <laughs> Go and listen to the Bleeding Metal podcast. Yes, the follow Bleeding Metal podcast is an old so podcast. Yeah, Bleeding Metal podcast on every platform at Bleeding Metal pod. Um, on Instagram is where we're the most active. And yeah, I'm KikiGG87 as well. You can find me there. And uh, yeah, don't don't be shy. Reach out to us, talk to us. And uh, thank you so much for, for having me here. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And I hope that everyone uh, enjoyed this, this chat. Thank you. Me too. <laughs>